WNBA on 2K Sports. Moments away, it'll be the Los Angeles Sparks going up against the Phoenix Mercury. With analysts Brian Vanapatemi and Tim Swartz, I'm Blake Suniga, and we're glad to have you with us. And guys, we all know about how important offense is in this league, but who is the best pure shooter in the WNBA? My pick is Ali Quigley. She was right around 40% from downtown for her career. That's special. And don't even get me started on her shot mechanics. I mean, I could watch her shoot all day long. Of course, she stole my pick, Brian. Well, if it's not Quigley, it's got to be Diana Taurasi. She turns a, a silky smooth jumper with her unwavering confidence. The result is one of the deadliest shooters the league has ever seen. Now, here's Parker. 13 feet out. It's rebounded by Phoenix. But he should be thanking her for that miss. Pass to Diggins Smith. Here's Turner. He's covered by Ogumike. After suffering a torn ACL in college, I'm excited to see what Turner has in store for her WNBA career. Well, one player who I think has all the tools necessary to succeed in this league is Brianna Turner. And I think that when she finally gets her big moment, she's going to deliver. The first free throw is good. And when I think of Turner, I think of a player that has a lot of potential, Tim. Absolutely. I mean, her time is coming. Offensively, she's incredibly skilled and fundamentally sound, especially as a screen setter, an offensive rebounder as well. Long, athletic. She'll make her presence felt in this league. Whether it was a shoulder surgery, an ACL tear, Brianna Turner dealt with a lot during her collegiate basketball career but she always remained locked in on rehabbing and keeping her hoops dreams alive. Yeah, she tried to fight her way through traffic and just couldn't do it. Beautiful dish, and the layup goes down. An absolute floor general. Vision and passing are the trademarks of Diggin Smith's game. Well, Brian, after bouncing back from injuries late in her college career, what can a healthy Brianna Turner bring to the court? Yeah, it's great to see her uh, bounce back from those injuries she suffered, but she's exceptional on defense, Blake, whether it's rebounding the ball or swatting shots away. Now, she has everything she needs to be a great player in this league, and I'm rooting for her. Now, here's Agumake. Here's Ruff and Pratt. Drops in the layup for two. A section of her game she has really worked on. Neka sees the floor well, sets others up. First quarter of basketball, just over two and a half minutes played so far. Up again. She hangs in there and cashes in on the second chance points. Way to work the glass, buffet style. Everyone grab a plate. Second chance buckets, they can make a big difference. Jesse Gray for three. He can't hit that time. Now Phoenix takes it the other way. Pass to Tarasi. Diggins Smith, Gray defending. Back to Diggins Smith. Tarasi, shot clock at six. To the paint. A few 
beautiful reverse layup. Good find by Griner. She's so much taller than everybody at 6'9". It allows her really to see the rest of the court. Outside, Parker. Here's Ruffin Pratt. And that one goes long. Well, that's just not a sight you see very often because she has a great feel for that jump shot, especially when she's open. Now, here is Agumake to the inside. Gray, so she gets the whistle. Contact on the way up. Two shots next. It's on Diana Jirasi. Rarely gets out of control. I admire how Gray just does whatever she has to do for her team to pick up a win on any given night. And the first one at the line is good. And you think of the best distributors in the league. Is Gray up there? Now she puts balls exactly where they need to be, has no problem running the offense, and recorded just the eighth triple-double in WNBA history. And that one goes in, two from the line that time. And when you talk about Gray's game, her assist numbers stem from just her unselfish approach. Absolutely. Chelsea plays hard and doesn't worry about who gets the credit. All that she's concerned about is getting the dub. And down it goes. Two points. She was the first one to react to that miss. I mean, that's just a hustle play on the putback. Outside, Parker. Tipped away. Pass to Agumake. That's in. Coming off an assist from Candace Parker. You know, over the second half of her career, Parker's assist numbers have increased significantly, thanks in large part to her savvy. Now here's Diggin Smith. Here's Coffey. Gray defending. Unable to get that one to go. Some solid defense from Candace Parker. Gray, that's good. And it's all knotted up. With a solid frame and terrific body control, Gray is comfortable operating down low. Here's to Rossi. And that one hits back iron. It's been a bit of a struggle for her this quarter in terms of scoring the ball. Here's Williams. And that misses. That would have put them up. Let's the floater go. Megan Smith. So the whistle blows on the shot. Two free throws for the contact there. It's going to be on Chelsea Gray. You know, I've always enjoyed the intensity Diggins Smith plays with. To say Skyler is competitive is a, a massive a understatement. Two shots. The first one falls. Guys, Diggin Smith can certainly serve as her team's emotional leader. Exactly. Skyler plays hard, and her teammates usually follow. Leadership kind of comes just natural to her. Coaches rave about her ability to bring the entire team together. And good on both. With multiple WNBA All-Star Game appearances already, Diggin Smith has really made a name for herself in this league. Now here's Gray. out. Well, you have to like the work in the boards here in the first. Yeah, coming out of the gates with great energy. You kind of like they got shot out of a cannon. They're really setting the tone. Boom. Diggin Smith with it. Gray defending. They get the rebound. Arguably the best ever inside. Griner is incredibly hard to stop without foul. That's her first trip to the line. Two shots. Shoot two. And the first one drops. Well, guys, there's so much talent in this league beyond the superstars. Of that category, who are some of your favorite players to watch? Well, Blake, I like the game of Elizabeth Williams. She's won the Most Improved Player Award not too long ago. A capable scorer and rebounder. She's also a quality shot blocker, always working around to make plays. Well, 
I gotta say, I'm a huge fan of John Quell Jones, a rising star in this league. She's already one of the WNBA's best rebounders. She also has a solid handle and can hit for long range. Talk about a unique combination of skills. And it's blocked by Brittany Griner. Hartley outside. Pass to Cunningham. Yes, and it's Rhea Hartley picking up the assist. Plays with lots of movement offensively, great from the perimeter, but also capable of doing damage inside. Now here is Augustus. Still getting warmed up offensively. No buckets yet in the game for her. They've been sensational on the boards to start this game. Yes, yeah, sensational is a good word for it, Tim. That's good. You usually have the right word for these kinds of situations. Just tearing it up on the glass. How kind of you, Brian. Here's Anigwe. Laid in with a nice touch off the glass. Well, you watch her play. I think she enjoys the contact. Anigwe is so strong. You have to really nail her to stop her. Pass to Griner. Vaughn. Hartley outside. With the floater. Gulich with the rebound. The Sparks trailing. Here's Sykes. One up, one down. Two points with her first shot in this game. This is when Sykes is at her best. Attacking, going fiercely at the hoop. Pass to Smith. Reiner. Cunningham. Gray defending. It's tipped. Now the Sparks moving it up. Here's Sykes. Gulich tips it back in. And it's a tie ball game. Uh, man, a player like her cannot be left alone around the hoop. Uh, I mean, if you do, it'll be buffet style all day long. Plenty of seconds right there. Here's Cunningham. Don't forget the oh, With the shot, makes no mistake on the open jump shot. And here's Augustus. Pass to Gray. Here's Gulich. And it's blocked by Brittany Griner. Such a strong defensive prowess. I love how Griner makes shooters stick not once, not twice, probably at least three times before shooting the rock around her. Just two seconds between the shot clock and the game clock. Now here is Sykes. Over to the left wing. Here's Gray. Offensive rebound. And that concludes the first quarter of play. It's the Mercury leading by four. And we'll be back in just a minute with the start of the second quarter. getting set to begin. And what do you guys think about the Mercury here in this one? Really putting in the work on the offensive glass. They've set the tone here early with the hustle. Phoenix leading. Now Griner. Foul called that time on the way up, and that'll give her two chances at the free throw line. Well, that's not fair. Griner doesn't do it all the time, but uh, when she does, she can put the ball on the floor a bit. And this is her second trip to the free throw line. Take a break. Take a break. Two shots. And the first one falls for her. Neka Gumake, the 2018 MVP, she gives you so much on the floor. A really strong finisher with the ball in her hands and very clever in how she gets a, the shot off inside. That one misses, so she goes one for two. And with Agumake, her efficiency is what stands out. You know, arguably the most efficient scorer in the league has always kept a very high field goal percentage, even with increased volume. And she's 
just as consistent a power forward you can ask for. Walker Kimbrough misses. Well, they call them layups for a reason. It's uh, not easy to miss that close to the rim. Sykes with the bucket. Consistently keeping her teammates involved and engaged. Ray's willingness to move the ball is contagious. Now here's Hartley. Pass to Walker Kimbrough. Clock at six. Shoots from 12. Here's Vaughn. And the rebound paying off as they pick up two on the second chance bucket right there. That's where you like your shots to come from. Back to Gray. Gulich. It's Brittany Sykes on the wing. And it's Phoenix with the rebound. That's one she knows she should have drained. Pass to Griner. Terrific assist and a nice finish. Just a solid play all around. Always easily above 50% shooting from the floor. Griner is deadly inside. Now here's Gray. Here's Augustus. Pulls it from the elbow. Griner with the rebound. Pass to Walker Kimbrough. Here's Griner. Hartley outside. Here's Walker Kimbrough. Gray defending. Walker Kimbrough misses. That's a shot she's got to hit. You don't get too many better looks from that range. They've had assists now on their last three baskets. Everybody always thinks it's passing that gets you assists but also their movement off the ball, it's created those opportunities. Takes the turnaround, Jay. It's good, it's her second basket. He's shooting two for four. Honestly, when she hits from this area of the court, you might as well quit. It makes Ryan almost impossible to stop. You just can't leave her out there. And the Sparks call time here. Numbers-wise, we used to just talk points, you know, rebounds, assists. Now we hear about offensive rating, box plus minus, true shooting percentage. Brian, what do you think of the new age stat movement? Well, I think it's fantastic because it allows us to see which players have an overall effect on a particular game. Defense is about your contribution to the team, not how many skills and blocks you register. And defensive ratings really illustrate how much you help the squad. Yeah, and on the offensive end, anybody in the WNBA could score lots and lots of points if they take lots and lots of shots. So a stat like offensive rating helps out to really paint the picture with how many little things you're doing for the team on the court to help your team score, because after all, it is a team game. Williams, guarded by Diggins Smith. Pass to Parker. Again, the miss by the Sparks. This game has been very close in a lot of areas, but rebounding is one thing that's gone in their favor. Yeah, effort and determination on the glass, they, they really can compensate for a lot of deficiencies. Ran her defender straight into that screen to open up the lane to the hoop. Justice outside. Pass to Agumake. Here's Williams. The Sparks, no good that time either. To the middle. Here's Turner. That one is off. Good D by Neko Agumake. Puts it up from 12. Williams can't get it to go. Diggin Smith with it. Good off the glass. Hey, look, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. They keep getting in the paint, and they keep scoring points. And you know, Brian, there's not really a lot you can do as a defense when they keep getting in the paint like they have been on this run. Here's Walker Kimbrough. They lead by the biggest margin of the game, nine. From downtown, it's good. The assist that time from Skyler Diggins Smith. I'm not the biggest fan of that shot, but guess what? He had the space to get it off, so why not? Puts up a three. They get it back. Reiner and 
so she draws the foul on the shot. A trip to the line to shoot two. It's going to go on Candace Parker. So many little moves that Brittany Griner has learned over the years. Using the pump is one of them. At the line for two. Take a break. Take a break. Two shots. The late blossoming of her offense has been incredible. Uh, Griner, her, her scoring average improved by five points during season five in the WNBA. That's also good, so she hits them both. Timeout called the Sparks. Yeah, the coaches seeing a lot of their shots miss the mark and figured it'd be a good time to draw something up, maybe get an easy look. Yeah, all my coaches always had one go-to play that you just keep in your back pocket, and that's probably the one that the coach is drawing up here, trying to get their team an easy bucket out of this break. Augustus. Outside Williams. And a foul called on the shot. Got her on the way up that time, so she'll shoot two. Well, the defense looking to protect the rim at all costs there. Something you struggled with in your career, Tim, but definitely saved the layup with that foul. She's going to have to earn him at the line. She makes the first. And she makes both free throws. And so here's Phoenix. Here is Diggin Smith. She's got six. Gets a three-pointer to fall. She found the perfect spot behind the arc there. A big gap in the D. Outside Williams. Pass to Agumake. Back to Williams. It's blocked. The rebounding has been off the chart today, guys. And that's the number one reason why this game is out of hand right now. Exactly. Their lead is not surprising, given their advantage on the glass. A creative finisher, Tarasi uses her athleticism to create good looks for herself. Outside, Williams. Inside, Parker gets the bucket. I'm not sure, really, in that set, who is supposed to be on her there. And apparently, neither do the defenders. You want to talk about making an impact your first year in the league? Candace Parker back in 2008. Now, she was the top pick in the draft and went on to win MVP as a rookie. Now, here's Williams. Augustus outside. Down to five on the shot clock. Second chance shot. Turner grabs the board. Such tough defense there against one of the better finishers in the game. Here's Tarasi. But they'll get another chance. Here's Reiner. That one goes. Count it. He is showing a killer instinct this quarter. Looking to extend this lead. 
winning it with the Sparks, Parker didn't just excel, she changed the game. Blake, she really revolutionized the WNBA, becoming the second player to ever dunk in a game, the first player to ever win MVP at the Rookie. And Augustus over to health. Pass to Turner. Good work there as it goes. They're just killing them in the paint. You can say that again. I mean, the defenders aren't being nearly aggressive enough down low. They're just killing them in the paint. Thank you. Now, here's Williams. Here's Parker. Takes the assist and lays it in. Picked out the pass nicely. Chemistry is important to Parker, and she prides herself on working together to find the best shot possible. Here's Coffey. He's got five. They double team Brittany Griner. And the ball is tied up, so we'll have a jump ball. So it's the Sparks now. And it would take a major comeback for them to get back into this one. Yeah, I mean, the chances of that happening are extremely slim. Down low, Megan Smith goes to the reverse layup and drops it in. Of their last six baskets, five have come on the interior. This is smash mouth basketball, guys. Yeah, they're really imposing their will offensively and getting exactly the kind of looks they want. Now here is Augustus. From 20 feet out, rebounded by Coffee. You know, she's disappeared this quarter, not making a mark at all with her offense. And you know she'll be happy to get this period over and done with Out of bounds. and just start fresh. Out of bounds, it'll be a smart ball. Where was she going with that pass? I have no clue. That, that's awful. That's just giving it away. And the Sparks making a change here. This Spark squad struggling. Pass to Gulich. Ray. And so she earns a trip to the line. Officials saw the contact, and she'll shoot two. It's on Bria Hartley. An extremely fluid offensive player. Defenses have to respect Ray's ability to put the ball in the basket. throw is good. The 11th pick in the 2014 WNBA draft, Gray's career has really started to take shape in recent seasons. He's perfect from the line this time. And it's the Mercury with the ball. It's a four-second differential between the shot clock and game clock. Vaughn, Parker defending. Back to Hartley. Lays it up and in off the nice reverse. And that'll raise their field goal percentage even more. They're enjoying a big edge in that category. And that's because they've been playing smart basketball. They've been very patient offensively, and their shot selection has just been great. Such a high IQ on this team. So here is Phoenix. Beyond the arc. And Chelsea Gray with the block. And through one half, it hasn't even been close. Mercury out in front, up by 16. Stay with us, folks. We'll be back just after halftime to get the third quarter going.
Hello and welcome back. Third quarter just about to get going in what has been a runaway of a game so far. And you know, Greiner has been really making it happen here. Quite simply, uh, she's been terrific. This is just what they need from her. And a double-double in just one half of basketball? You can't ask for anything more as a coach, teammate, or fan. Well, it's been a one-sided affair through the first two quarters, but there is plenty of time to mount a comeback. Now here's Diggin Smith. Here's Turner. The shot off that time. Great D that time from Neko Ogumake. Here's Ruffin Crack. The second chance effort. No good there. And the Mercury going the other way now. Count that one. They've shown some great passing on their last few trips down the floor. You gotta imagine that their coach is very happy with that. Four straight passes leading to scores. That's just great team play. Now here's Williams. Six to shoot. Back to Parker. Pass to Ruffin Pratt. Top of the key. Again, the miss by the Sparks. They start the second half with three straight misses. And she comes up with the deuce. Their first passing has opened things up offensively. Yeah, it makes the game easy. Ten straight points off of an assist. Um, that's impressive. Now here's Parker. Brittany Griner with a defensive effort. A donut, a zero so far to start the second half. Four straight misses. Megan Smith, Gray defending. And here's Diana Parasi from the arc. Gets the three to fall. They've had a solid start to the second half offensively. Gotten good looks and hit three of four of them. Gray outside. The Sparks, no good that time either. Rough start to the second half. That's five straight misses. The offensive rebound. Yep, that goes. Doing some work in the paint. We don't always see that from Tarasi, who's at uh, six feet. Pass to Williams. Now Ogumake. The jump shot from the baseline is right on target. And these guys have had some good motion on offense. Nice assists. When everybody's involved offensively, it's in a way helping you defensively, too. Basket counts. That's just great ball movement. And that's key this run. Passing it with a purpose. The D has not been able to keep up. Now here's Parker. Out to the wing. Gray outside. Shoots over Diggin Smith, and it's Gray missing. She can't get anything to drop. And the way she's going, it's probably not something she can try to, to shoot her way out of. And I'm sure her teammates would agree with that. You know, the last thing they want to see her doing is shooting it more. Now here's Gray. Six points for her. Back to Williams. That's in, coming off an assist from Candace Parker. Textbook. Nice pass. Nice catch. Nice shot. Here's Greiner. That's in. It's her fifth field goal. She's shooting a hot 71%. Five for seven. Outside, Parker. Pass to Agumake. To the middle. And Brittany Greiner with the block. Rossi outside. And there's the whistle. Fouled hard on the shot, and we'll go to the line. And it goes on Raquana Williams. Frequently has defenders on edge. Now, Tarasi is a master at taking advantage of her opponent's mistakes. Two shots. And he knocks down the first one. With multiple championships and all WNBA first-team selections, Tarasi has cemented her legacy in basketball history.
good on the second, so she makes both. And the Sparks call time here. It's been quite a game for Diana Taurasi. She's been attacking the rim with force. They need to deny her the ball in the paint, keep her away from the bucket. Augustus. Asta Nigue. Ogumake. Gray outside. Double team on Chelsea Gray. Parker with the ball. Shoots from the elbow. And that one's good. Augustus. That's what makes an all-star so many times over. Scoring when the D is good. Augustus has done that again and again. Now here's Hartley. Here's Turner. Augustus grabs the miss. And here are the Sparks now. You know, Augustus continues to impress me with his scoring ability. So tough to guard. There's a reason why she's been named to so many all-star teams. Here's Walker Kimbrough. They get a hand on it. It's stolen by Augustus. Ogumake, left side. Augustus, no good. Well, Augustus has many offensive capabilities, but I'm a fan of her consistency. Yeah, Simone brings the same effort and intensity game in and game out. Averages double-digit points like it's a walk in the park. But trust me, it's not. And really, teammates can always rely on her for a pick-me-up type of performance. Here's Anigwe. Now to Agumake, just five to shoot. And that's a foul called on to Rossi. That's foul number two for her. And the Sparks making a change here. Here's Gray. Sinks that one from the post. One of Gray's greatest strengths as a scorer is her versatility. She really has the tools to create her own offense. Walker Kimbrough, guarded by Augustus. Rossi outside, five to shoot. Oversight, and the Mercury tech on two more. The more touches she gets, the more the lead grows. Defense, 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 defense. Defense, defense. Here's Gray. The 19-footer is on the money. A hard worker who is always getting better. Gray's mid-range game is pretty fine-tuned now. Here's Hartley. It's hauled in by the Sparks. To the paint, Gulich. And she drops in the layup off glass. You can always depend on her to put that lead pass right on the money. Here's Hartley. And some very quick points for them on that possession. Nice job to shake free of the D inside and then drain the J. Sykes left side. Anigwe. The jump hook. And yep, it's good. Well, she's got an array of post moves, 6'4 height, and soft touch. Anigwe has all the tools to be a great inside scorer for years to come. Hartley's shot is off. The defense was ready for her, got a hand in her face, and made that one much tougher. And that's something that every team needs, rugged interior defense to just make your opponent think twice about coming down the lane. The shot's just not dropping for her today. Pass to Walker Kimbrough. Here's Vaughn. Hartley outside. 
Walker Kimbrough. And it's off from three-point range. Here's Augustus. Makes it off the glass. Moving it around. Eight of the last ten points coming off assists. Nothing makes a coach happier than a display of pure selfless time teamwork. Out, time out. Absolutely. And the Mercury call time here. Well, one thing that really stood out to me from watching Anigwe in college was her offensive rebounding. Can we discuss the night she put up 30 points and 32 rebounds? I mean, who does that? Back to Hartley. 4-3. And it's Parker with the rebound. Uh, okay, look, look. I know she isn't having the best of games from the floor, but it hasn't seemed to hurt them. We're seeing some good ball movement out of them. Definitely. Ten of their last 12 points have come off assist. Hartley outside. Pass to Turner. Sykes. The bank shot, no good. Shot clock and game clock, one second differential. Here's Parker, good, and it's Chelsea Gray who picks up the assist. Yes, Every time they get scored on during this run, it seems like it's come from inside the paint. Buckle up on defense. Yeah, it's time to collapse down and make them shoot jumpers. Here's Hartley. Defender who takes pride in shutting down opponents. Gray is the kind of competitor every team in the league needs. Well, through three quarters of play, down double digits, it may be difficult to overcome. Mercury out in front, up 19. And fourth quarter basketball will be coming here. And while we have the chance, let's go to our State Farm assist of the game. I'm so happy we get to see this pass just one more time. A magnificent feed. You love to see the two uh, kind of taking over the playmaking duties with this much skill. Yeah, that is some dime dropping, guys. Accurate and on time. And thanks again for joining us. We'll see what happens in the fourth. Pass to Sykes. Now Parker. Sykes with the bucket. Even at 5'9", no fear from Sykes. She plays way bigger than her height. Tremendous heart. Hartley outside. From 13 feet, down it goes. And the Sparks with possession here. Trailing by 19. Outside, Williams. Shoots from 12. Offensive board. Coolidge, good. That's the 10th straight point they've given up in the paint. It doesn't matter how good their perimeter defense is if they keep allowing easy looks inside. Hartley outside. Coffee. Pass to Cunningham. Five on the clock. Launches it. That shot, no good. And the Sparks the other way now. Now here's Parker. Outside Williams. And there's the whistle. Illegal screen. He played mistake-free basketball up to that point. That's the only time she's turned it over so far. The Sparks making a switch here. And they've been really controlling this one. Never want to get too complacent, though. Here's Smith. Back to Griner. Pass to Cunningham. And it's going to be a 24-second violation. They'll turn it over. So both teams changing it up here. And we're around two minutes into the fourth here. 
now here is Sykes. She's guarded by Hartley. Outside, Williams. Just five on the clock. Parker. Make it five for ten for her with that bucket. That's something you only see from established scorers like Candace Parker. She's got a developed skill set and the capacity to power through contact. Pass to coffee. Here's Reiner. Goes up and lays it in nice and easy. Well, they've built this lead to plays exactly like that. She's easily been the most consistent performer. No question about that. I mean, she's just hitting everything in sight. Parker inside, and it's rejected. Here's Diggins Smith, and the layup is good after a nice lead pass. One of the most coachable players in the league, Diggins Smith's curiosity leads to her constant improvement. Pass to Agumake. Sykes. Fourth quarter of play, and over three and a half minutes have gone by now. Greiner with the ball. Count that bucket. He has shot the ball exceptionally well as they built this lead for themselves. And they're looking for a way to score here. Yeah, they've had a tough time taking the lid off. They gotta score. Sykes outside. Pass to Agumake. Parker. She's guarded by Griner. The three ball. They grab their own miss. It's good on the putback. Relentless on the glass. Neka Agumake, a double double threat every night. And now Griner. She's guarded by Sykes. It's stolen by Sykes. Here's Parker. Finished off the break. We've seen an obvious improvement out of her since halftime, and she just didn't really have a whole lot working for her in the first half. Pass to Hartley. Back to Diggins Smith. Coffee. And here is Diggins Smith. She's covered by Abumake. Diggins Smith's shot is off. Now the Sparks with it. They've given up just eight points in the fourth quarter. With tremendous handles and ways to score, Sykes is so difficult to stop. No choice but to send her to the line sometimes. Brittany Sykes. Two shots. Shooting two. No good on that one. After tearing her ACL twice in college, some may have quit. Not Brittany Sykes, who ended up leading her school to a national title game. She's off on the second. And this has been a one-sided affair. Yeah, they've done a very nice job of extending their lead. Here's Turner. The basket drops, and she gets fouled on the shot. One free throw coming up for her. The first one falls. 
Yeah, for Ogumake, her game is predicated on being hard to predict. That's right, Blake. You know, mixing it up on defenders is so important, and you always want to stay one step ahead of the defense, and Ogumake usually is, and that's kind of what allows her to pull through in any game situation. So she gets them both. Well, can you imagine the one-on-one -on -one games Neke had with her younger sister, Chine, growing up? Both top overall picks in the WNBA draft. An incredible basketball family. It's rebounded by Phoenix. If they could end every possession with that shot, they'd be happy. Because nine times out of ten, that's an easy layup. Just lighting it up here in the second half. Simone Augustus on the wing. He's covered by Tarasi. Neko Gumake double team. And it's Candace Parker penetrating. Excellent D there from Brittany Greiner. Here's Coffey. Pass to Diggins Smith. Greiner fades. It's good. Lighting it up again. Greiner led the WNBA in scoring for a reason. She's expanded her offensive game. And they could use a big shot here to get this offense going. Yeah, too many empty possessions. I mean, it's simple. They need points. Rough and Pratt's shot's good. Ran her defender straight into that screen to open up the lane to the hoop. Close one up. And the bucket is good from Karasi in B. What a feel-good story, right? I mean, she has been much more effective in the second half than she was in the first. Augustus outside. Here's Ruff and Pratt. They get it back. Great positioning on the putback. If you were looking only at the way she's played offensively, you'd think her team was ahead. Pass to Tarasi. Megan Smith. For the basket, her fifth of the game. She's missed six shots against those five mates. Constantly looking for the open teammate. And really, that's one of the many reasons why players love having Tarasi on their team. Uh, shot by Parker, no good. Now here's Diggins Smith. She's guarded closely. Pass to Griner. Turner, and she was fouled on the way up. Two free throws for her. It's going to go on Candace Parker. Not afraid to challenge defenders. Turner plays with confidence and composure. Turner, taking two shots. Two shots. And the first one drops. No good on the second, so she hits one of two. When I think of players who have really improved as rebounders, I immediately think of Rashonda Gray. Early in her WNBA career, she wasn't putting up the biggest numbers, but with more minutes nowadays, she's been putting in work. Smith, she's guarded by Sykes. Four on the shot clock. From way back! The Sparks grab the miss. Fast break, here come the Sparks. Tries again. No good. Not a friendly rim at all this trip down. Here's Walker Kimbrough. Right wing. Three-pointer. Rebound by Gray. And here are the Sparks now. To the inside. Sykes. Off with the layup. Here's Walker Kimbrough.
easily grabbing this one. They poured it on tonight. A dominant showing in front of a crowd that loved every minute of it. This game really a defining game for what they can do when they're playing at their best. Being here at home helps, but, but the execution anywhere was terrific. That'll do it for our broadcast, everyone.